Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome to the final exam of uh, uh, this semester uh, in mathematics for introductory introductory math for artificial intelligence. Okay, today yeah we will uh, review some uh, and then I will give you a chance to, to present uh, your final PBL report. The first. Uh, I will give about 20 minutes, 10, about 15 to 20 minutes to Kim Dasol uh, for uh, his about 240 page uh, PBL report. And then uh, I will, uh, then the Mr. Park Jun Ho will have a chance to uh, give his presentation for about uh, 15 uh, minutes. And then uh, Kim Dasol. Uh, will have a chance to uh, present his final PBL report for about 10 minutes. Before we start, yeah, we will share this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, do you see your uh, 2021 whole semester PBL report in, on the screen? Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. This, the, I I spent some hours in the weekend uh, uh, to uh, grade uh, your PBL report, and uh, th uh, this is some of uh, uh, your report. And basically, it was made with uh, the freshmen in Daniel and Paravaskiri uh, and and uh, Juno. Uh, sent uh, a PDF file, so I couldn't uh, edit uh, his uh, materials. And he, so uh, basically, uh, this was made by Kim Daniel and uh, Giri, which, who both are uh, freshmen uh, our school. Okay, anyway, you, uh, uh, all of you made your uh, final report, but uh, uh, the important thing was, yeah, we have learned basic mathematics, basic mathematics, very basic mathematics on uh, matrix and uh, partial derivatives and uh, basic statistics to understand. And uh, so you can talk about uh, with uh, others who had interest in artificial intelligence, which include uh, uh, the singular value decomposition and the gradient distance method and data and covariance matrix and principal component analysis and re rank reduction and the role of a singular value decomposition in PCA and back propagation algorithm, which is, uh, is used in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, yeah, I gave you some yeah, code. I, I recently I made uh, the the code for the middle school and high school mathematics that I introduced uh, in Q and A, and uh, yeah, uh, they, uh, sooner or later the junior student uh, yeah will learn uh, mathematics with uh, this code because the coding class has been offered from the elementary schools, so those students should be able to handle the uh, mathematical computation uh, with the code. So those uh, uh, knowledge was uh, actually used in our class already uh, to not only understand uh, the concept of this, but also gave you uh, the way uh, to practice your own problems and also learn uh, the other way of solving the same problem that you have solved by hand for many years uh, with the code, uh, with the, uh, your coding uh, and the, uh, coding knowledge and with, uh, in your uh, smartphone, in your, in your hand. Okay, in, in mobile environment now you can handle uh, such uh, computational problems uh, in mathematics. 
and then and then I gave you I gave you a uh, problem to fill to be filled such as case more than 10 math uh, definition and concept that you have learned in the first 14 weeks and I also gave you uh, questions like uh, like state more than 10 things that you know and can or can or find after you studied uh, the last 14 uh, weeks and I asked you to fill out the record of your activities academic activities it, this is done simply not only question and answers and uh, your comment or reply also should be uh, added. So maybe Kim Dasol, uh, you may have uh, some more activities if you include, uh, if you search your name, if you search your name all together, then the number should be more than what you uh, think because, uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, you are your work was mentioned by the others, and also you may have le may, uh, left uh, some of your simple uh, comments uh, on others' work. So the number should be improved. That will make some change on your grade. So let me know how many numbers you have done so I can give you a point. I, I have no time to collect all of your those activities for the last 14 weeks. In this semester, I have only a few students. So I may be able to do it, but usually when I have a large class, I cannot trace all of your number of small activities by myself. Or well, TA don't like to do it. So so you have to you have to tell what you have done so I can count on your activities. Uh, and professor and mm -hmm. I, I I actually take that in the the report that I at you. Okay, I will. Ch I will so, check yours. Yeah. I, but but I I should fix that again. Mm -hmm. So I will I will send you again the report. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. To, before this exam is over, you have to do it. So after the exam, yeah. I will grade all of them and will be done. Okay. Before this class is over, please uh, let me know. In any way, you you can you can just send this part again. Only this part again to me by message or by okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 then I ask you to uh, what kind of concept uh, and uh, that you can explain now, and what kind of the uh, the uh, computation that you can do uh, now after the fourteen weeks of uh, learning in this class and I ask you to state some of your memorable comment or answer and or discussions that you have had in this class just a couple of them and Giri uh, write it in a statement like this and Daniel uh, just mentioned uh, the, the, the titles but but that's okay and also, I ask you to uh, fill out the project proposal, and I want to uh, update uh, as much as you can for some extra uh, credit for the for your final PBL report. Some did and some did not, and those will be counted for your uh, when I'm grading it uh, to give you an extra point. If you can explain in today's uh, uh, today, uh, in the presentation of yours next, mm -hmm. uh, next, yeah, these are, and also, yeah, there was a self evaluation. Yeah, most of you did very, uh, very well on this, and also uh, there was a uh, the peer uh, review self-evaluation and peer review, and those will be also counted. There are some students uh, who help others uh, well and give uh, good impressions on uh, important concepts, and those 
you are appreciated by your classmates uh, and that will be counted. Yeah, and uh, there are 200 uh, of your activities. Uh, actually, actually it, we started it uh, with a very small and simple questions, but as time goes, the quality and quantity of the questions has been uh, increased. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, actually you, could, you have learned how to communicate the mathematics uh, in in our uh, learning environment, and also you have learned how to use the, uh, the uh, mathematical concepts and code uh, to adapt uh, your data uh, to draw a certain conclusions. And that's what uh, I, I uh, wanted, to, uh, want, wanted to you to learn. And also you now know how to utilize the information all over the world, particularly on the web. So now you, yeah, some of you did find the very good uh, data from, uh, from uh, your area. And then uh, you did use the algorithms and code that we have learned uh, to utilize uh, those data to draw the conclusions that you like to have. Yeah, I was glad. I'm, I'm glad to uh, to see uh, uh, your activities, and I was very happy to uh, uh, give my uh, comment on your activities. And here, here, uh, like this, if you just copy this code like this, and then you go anywhere and here, then uh, you can execute it to the same computation like uh, uh, what you see in here okay so okay here okay okay so as you see yeah you can copy this code and you can practice any of these places you could do this in your mobile, in your smartphone, without any difficulty. Okay, that's what I intended. You don't have to buy any software or any hardware uh, to do mathematics uh, to to be to uh, handle uh, your data. Yeah, you now uh, with these materials, uh, then you can recall what you have learned, and you can use. You don't have to memorize all the code. You can. You don't have to save anything. That. Uh, you can you can use all those knowledge that you have learned in the semester uh, to to practice uh, what you have learned uh, in your area. Yeah. We had uh, in the uh, in the last semester, I took uh, over the exams like this, uh, and uh, but uh, this semester, yeah, I gave you a, a, the part of PBL report, and you did it. I could make a final exam like this. But yeah, since you are uh, working on the uh, new ideas uh, in the part five, uh, artificial neural network and the back propagation algorithms, I want you to concentrate on those PCA and uh, back propagation algorithms. So yeah, so I didn't make another uh, final exam. Instead, I gave a final quiz, so you could uh, catch up. And in the midterm examination, you gave uh, uh, the uh, problems and the, the, the final comment on your midterm examination. In addition to that, you should have the, uh, the final comment uh, after the uh, final uh, PBL report. That's what uh, I expected. And uh, some of you uh, showed you showed me yeah, what you have learned and what you can do now. And that's the uh, end of it. So now yeah, we are uh, ready uh, for our uh, present uh, for your presentation. Before we start to, to hear the uh, presentation of your final uh, report, we should start from uh, Kim Dani. Uh, if, if, is there any question? Didi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are ready? 
<laughs> okay, then uh, get uh, prepared for your presentation. I will give you about 15 or 20 minutes for your presentation after uh, uh, two, uh, present, uh, two uh, presentation of the final exam. Okay, now. Okay, now, uh, Daniel, uh, if you are ready, then please share your screen for your presentation. Okay. Can you see my so screen, right? First page. Yeah. So, uh, I think we should have to start from the week seven, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we are in uh, ten twenty seven. So I will give you about uh, fifteen to twenty minutes. So uh, try to explain what you have learned uh, based on your final TBLE test. Yeah. Okay. So. We can see here, uh, first things first, uh, we last PBL report, we stopped on uh, local maximum or uh, maximums and minimums. So uh, final exam will start from first things first is the gradient descent method, which is basically a very useful algorithm because um, it is very hard to find the derivative using uh, code. So what we do is that we use gradient descent methods, and uh, the idea of gradient descent method is that we, for, uh, for example, we have a value x in the function, and we reduce that value x till we reach the minimal uh, function value. Uh, and when we reach the minimum uh, result, or that would be our local minimum. Uh, however, gradient descent methods we cannot uh, like. We cannot use gradient descent method for for all functions, and we need to choose carefully the starting point and the step. Uh, since sometimes, if we if we are not careful and choose the wrong one, uh, we can go to the infinity, or get just the incorrect results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, we got introduced to a factorial, which is actually a part of calculus, from what I know. Uh, basically, the idea of factorial is just a recursive multiplication. For example, the factorial of 5 is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Uh, and we should remember that the factorial of 0 is 1. Uh, that's the rule. Uh, also, we took something from the discrete mathematics, uh, especially we got introduced to permutations and combinations. Basically, a uh, permutations is uh, when we care about the order, uh, how we can choose a num uh, for example here k elements out of n elements total. Uh, however, we care about their order. Uh, whereas with combinations, we don't care about their order; we just care about the things that we choose. Uh, and here we utilize the newly learned factorial. Uh, then we uh, then we started learning the probability probability theory, which is uh, just a huge branch of mathematics mathematics uh, that basically concerns of probabilities. And uh, first things first that we need to know is the sample space and probability space, which is just uh, a set of possible outcomes. Uh, this is basically the same as the range of the function. Uh, and what we need to know is the formula of probability, which we call usually mathematical probability. What we do is that we divide a number of outcomes of something uh, divide, uh, by the total number of outcomes. And there is also a term called statistical probability. Since uh, like the mathematical probability shows the so-called perfect probability. However, when we uh, perform experiments, uh, we do not always have the same probability. However, what we do know is that the more experiments we perform, the, prob uh, the statistical probability will, uh, will reach, will tend to the mathematical probability. And the more experiments we perform, uh, the closer it becomes. Uh, then we uh, we got to know the conditional probability, and uh, here was, uh, uh, and basically, it just shows us a probability of 
uh, an event happening if another event happens. So here is the formula uh, P of BA uh, is equals to probability of the intersection of events A and B divided by probability of A. And uh, what it says basically is that the probability of event B happening if event A happens. Uh, then we got to learn the bias theorem uh, and which basically describes the probability like does almost the same as the conditional probability. However, what it says us is that it can show us the probability of event A happening if event B happens. So basically it changes uh, the order. And it is basically easily proven. Uh, like, let me show you. So here we can say uh, this is the conditional probability, right? The formula of conditional probability. And in the bottom is the formula of the bias theorem. And it is easily proven because uh, if we take a look at it, like, uh, so we can see here, uh, let's, let's show you. uh, can you see what I'm drawing? I suppose, or not. um, so you can see here, right? Uh, so this is, uh, the conditional probability. So we can see this is the same, right? Okay. So technically, if we replace it, uh, so if we replace it with that formula, we get this, right? And now what we need to do is that we can see the probability of B here and the probability of uh, of B in the numerator, uh, in uh, denominator. So what we can do is that we can just remove them. And what we get is the final formula of, again, B of A intersection with B divided by probability of A. <laughs> and we basically return to the initial formula right here. Mm -hmm. So it is basically easily proven. The bias theorem is easily proven. Uh, now, uh, after that, so we just learned the functions of the probabilities. And we need to know that there are two types of random variables. One of them are discrete variable. A discrete variable is basically a defined finite set of variables. For example, a discrete variable could be a values of a dice. We know that dice can only have six values, uh, six different results. That's an example of discrete variable. And we have continuous variables. Continuous variables are just a range of variables. For example, all the values less than 10. Uh, now we need, uh, so with that out of the way, uh, we need, we have a discrete probability distribution, which basically describes the probability of a discrete random variable and, uh, discrete probability distribution has a corresponding function called probability mass function. Uh, uh, that is a function that returns the probability of a certain event happening. Uh, and we have the continuous probability distribution that also uh, describes the probability of a continuous random variable. And uh, in comparison with the discrete probability distribution, we have not probability mass function, but rather a probability density function that uh, doesn't really give an exact probability, but it gives you a relative likelihood that mm -hmm. a, a, some a value, uh, value can result. Uh, then we uh, learned the expectation and basically some people call expectation a mean value uh, uh, because it's just Daniel, an average. Daniel, yeah. uh, uh, did you take a statistics before or this was the first time you, you have faced uh, this concept? Uh, uh, you, have, you have learned the standard deviation or covariance or covariance matrix before? No. Uh, I'm freshman, so. Not but really. you must take some statistics while you are in high school, isn't it? Yes, uh, I got introduced to statistics in my high school. Uh, uh, anyway, you don't have to explain everything that you have covered in 14 years. <laughs> yeah, just to tell me you know, what you have learned and what you can explain now with your materials. 
That's oh, what okay. we want to hear. What yeah. you have learned and what you can see explain with the, your PBA report. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then I'll cover the most important ones. So <laughs> Okay, we need to know the standard deviation, which is a square root of variance. This is very important because the standard deviation usually is more accurate than the variance. And we need to know the standardized random variables. This is a very important because, for example, if we have a prob uh, if we have two di probabilities of uh, distance, however, these probabilities are in different units. For example, we have a probability in meters and feet, uh, we cannot compare them directly. But what we can do is that we can standardize them. And after that, we can easily compare them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also got to know the, not, uh, the previous probability functions and probabilities were concerning only one uh, random variable. However, the joint probability distribution con uh, concerns multiple variables. Uh, here we need to know also a covariance matrix, which is basically a very complicated uh, term, but uh, we just need to know that it visualizes the data distribution, and it is important in the principal components analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some various uh, distributions. Uh, however, what we need to know now is mm -hmm. the principal components analysis. Yes. So it is one of the dimensionality reduction techniques. What it does is that, for example, if we have a of uh, like uh, four dim uh, data in four dimensions, we can reduce it to simply two, and uh, with this we can uh, reduce the computation required computation power. Mm -hmm. and basically increase the speed while minimizing the information loss. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to perform principal components analysis, we actually need uh, the previous knowledge, and one of them is the uh, SVD or a singular value decomposition. Uh, <coughs> and actually, uh, there are multiple ways to perform principal components analysis. We can uh, use, as I said, a singular value decomposition or the usual, uh, what was, uh, eigenvalue decomposition. However, people usually use singular value decomposition because, as we know, the mm -hmm. eigenvalue decomposition can only be performed on a diagonalizable matrices. Mm -hmm. However, as we know, singular value decomposition can be performed on any sort of ma matrices. Mm -hmm. Uh, and actually, there are a number of dimensionality reduction techniques, but principal components analysis is the most basic one and most popular. Mm -hmm. uh, what about machine learning? Uh, it's ba basically a whole another sphere of the computer algorithms, which actually concerns a, uh, a computer or a program learning something without a direct uh, uh, interference of a programmer. Like, uh, you do not directly write algorithms, you just tell it to learn and it will learn. Uh, and one of the machine learning algorithm examples is the artificial neural networks. Mm -hmm. uh, artificial neural networks is basically a like we know that the human brains all also has uh, have neurons, mm -hmm. so an artificial neural network is basically a simulation of that. Uh, you should, uh, all artificial neural networks has an input layer and output layer, mm -hmm. and so if in between these layers we have additional layers mm -hmm. called hidden, uh, this artificial this ANN uh, consider a deep learning algorithm. And in INN, we need to know the big propagation, which is the most fundamental part of the uh, ANN. What it does is that basically we know that um, when when something happens, uh, the machine. Uh, wait, uh, wait. <laughs> so uh, let me show you. So um, in order to calculate an output, uh, for, for we have part, a formula. Uh, Daniel, yeah. for the. Uh back propagation algorithm that I explained in our textbook and yeah. in our lectures. Uh, that was the whole process uh, that I uh, wrote it by myself in Korean and in English. There was no uh, full detail of explanation 
uh, of such in other literacy, in other literatures. Okay? And uh, you summarized uh, the, the steps that I introduced yeah. uh, well. And, and uh, this is a very detailed explanation of that proposition, which you couldn't find in any other places. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so yeah. if you explain it well to the others, they will be they will appreciate on your explanation because they couldn't find so such a detailed explanation or explanation of that propagation. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get going. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we know is that first we need to understand that in order to calculate the output, mm -hmm. uh, we just summarize uh, all the weights times the input and add some bias. So here we shouldn't really concern the bias because it's just mm -hmm. an arbitrary variable. Mm -hmm. What we need to know is the weight. What is a weight is just decides how influential the input on the output. However, when we just create an artificial uh, neural uh, network. Daniel, yeah. The bias is not uh, arbitrary. It's not, not trivial. It is also very important. But the analysis does not affect, so it's not affected by that bias. If we do the analysis, with, the analysis without bias, still the, our answers can be adapted to the original problem. But the bias is very important. To, yeah, but it, it increases, right? It's not arbitrary <laughs> chosen or anything. It's important. <laughs> okay, get going, yeah. Yeah, be. so we basically, yeah, but bias actually, we can perform it without the bias, yes, although the bias right. increases that's the key. accuracy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but initially, when we create the artificial neural network, the weights are usually random. Like, according to the back propagation algorithm, the initial weights are randomized mm -hmm. because the machine doesn't even know uh, how inflation they should be. So then what we do is uh, that we perform all uh, the listed actions, like, for example, we calculate the outputs. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, so yeah, we calculate them, and if, we, uh, if they are the same, then it is good. So we basically calculate the error. Mm -hmm. If the error is huge, then we adjust the, the weights using the gradient descent method. Mm -hmm. So we use gradient descent methods in order to find the minimal error. Mm -hmm. Then we adjust the weights and perform again. Mm -hmm. So we again uh, do a standard calculation of our variables. Then we again calculate error. And if again it is huge, we again perform the gradient descent method. And we do that over and over again until we just reach the satisfactory results. Like, uh, from what I read, usually the satisfactory results is the results over 87% the accuracy. Uh, and that's what my propagation algorithm is all about. Okay. This, mm -hmm. this is the thing that actually teaches the machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, also we got introduced to the most basic data set, which is MNIST, so basically stands for Modified National Institute of Standards and Technology Database. Mm -hmm. What it has is just 60,000 different numbers on a, on a black 28 by 28 pixels images. And what they're used to is uh, they're used for the digit recognition. Uh, and you actually introduced us to the ways to do a digit recognition artificial neural network using the MNIST. And finally, what we we also learned about the TSNIE, which is basically an alternative to the principal components analysis. So it's also a dimensional dimensionality reduction. And what I want to show you is uh, how a principal uh, principal components uh, the visualization of principal components analysis. Uh, what in principal components analysis, what we basically do is that here is the visualization of it. <laughs> so suppose these are our data, right? And this is how we search for the principal components analysis. So we need to find such a line so that the nor uh, the projections of the data. Give us the most variation. 
So as we can see here, oh, this we begin from here, for example, right? Mm -hmm. As we see, a lot of data is close, very close. So that's not really a lot of variation. However, the perfect principle, almost perfect principle component analysis, as we can see here. Okay. So the variables are scattered around, we can see, right? Oh, uh, so, and this will be our principal component analysis. We basically reduced the dimension mm -hmm. without the loss of, although we lose data information, but, uh, but the variance, uh, but the variety, uh, is almost the same. That's so yeah. uh, you have uh, used about 15 minutes and now I will give you 10 more minutes to go to, to finish up your presentation. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so I explained, uh, I think oh, this, we can skip that section because okay. I explained a lot. Uh, however, what I want to talk about is uh, the project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so in midterm PBL, I just wrote a, um, a proposition and mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the usage of OpenAI GPT-3. However, uh, the thing is that it was closed at that time, but two weeks ago, uh, the Google actually released the OpenAI API publicly, mm -hmm. uh, GPT-3. Uh, uh, and however, it is still in beta. So mm -hmm. I didn't ha have enough time to fully understand the API and how it is used. However. Uh, what I found is an interesting example. So we can see here, uh, default mood color. Uh, the point of it is, uh, so for example, if I open it in playground, so here is uh, the background color, right? And what we write, for example, uh, for a color like a, if we wrote a some violence, right? Mm -hmm. FF0000, what we have is the hex color and this corresponds to a red color. So as we can <laughs> see, this is something bad. And for example, something good, I don't know, happy. It should give us neutral color, colors from, uh, so I think I need to regenerate it. <clears throat> so basically I, I have screenshots like here, here. So the violence FF0000 is a red color. So this is something bad, right? And if we write a good, which is 9E, 9E, 9E. So if we, this is a gray neutral color. Mm -hmm. So with that, we can basically classify words to on bad words and good words. And so we can calculate the aggressiveness level of a particular past. And on top of that, what we can do is that we can also use an image recognition or image classification, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to, uh, for example, on some, for example, on Twitter, you can also upload the images. Mm -hmm. and we can also classify the images, for example, on, uh, if we see a weapon on an image or a blood or something, this can also contribute to the aggressiveness level. And in that case, we can use an uh, YOLO, which is a very fast algorithm. So we can see here, uh, which is a very fast real-time object detection algorithm. So there is a huge, uh, very thorough explanation. But in comparison with, our, with others, the speed of YOLO is uh, 100 times faster than the usual image recognition uh, AIs. Or if just as a proof of concept, we can use an image AI, which is an easy to use uh, Python uh, framework already taught uh, image recognition, artificial intelligence. So this is how image AI works. So this is a visualization of it. Mm -hmm. And what I also faced, the biggest problem again here is our data sets. Like, we, we do not yet have enough uh, examples or uh, data to actually teach in uh, my proposed ANM. Uh, so it will be pretty hard uh, to mm -hmm. actually do that. Mm -hmm.
Uh, so I guess this is it. Uh, however, I think I need to mention also one, uh, one all very important thing regarding mm. the back propagation. So uh, mm. you mentioned that back propagation also are very sometimes very bad since uh, like noisy information, right? Uh, very uh, very sensitive to noise information, and it can actually hurt it. So what I uh, uh, you know, the interviewing artificial intelligence, right? Uh, job interviews. So what I mm -hmm. saw is that, uh, so there was a job interviewing AI, mm -hmm. uh, that actually got, um, I suppose it was, yeah, the project was completely removed because the point being, uh, what they used, uh, on AI is that they uh, gave it a very noisy data set. Mm -hmm. And what it leads to is that, for example, uh, if you take an interview with that AI and you have a, for example, a blue background, mm -hmm. you would have a higher score than someone with the white background. So here, because of the noisy, mm -hmm. noisy data sets, uh -huh. The back propagation actually did a worse job. Mm -hmm. So that's what we should consider. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And, and uh, uh, give some uh, peer review and your final comment to close up. Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'll say that uh, the beginning was very interesting and uh, mm -hmm. However, the end was just very exciting and more, even more interesting. Mm -hmm. If in the first eight weeks we were mostly repeat something or just learn the basics of calculus and discrete maths mm -hmm. uh, that's used, uh, the rest of the weeks we focused purely on the things that are very important in AI, like decomposition, dimensionality, reduction, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I personally, yeah, very grateful <laughs> because uh, not only this taught me a lot, but also it's even helped me in other courses, like, uh, as I mentioned, discrete math and calculus, like gave me a more thorough understanding of the concepts. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Done? Okay, good. You are a freshman. A freshman. Daniel. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so you. Did you take a linear algebra class or calculus or discrete math before? Uh, no, I took calculus and discrete math this year. However, uh, the essentials of both of these courses I were introduced in high school. Mm, so you went through the first part uh, without your 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 uh, all your knowledge on linear algebra. So you was it okay to understand the singular value decomposition? Uh, yes, I understood the concept. Although, have you learned? Uh, before? Uh, no, singular reality composition now. Uh, and even though it is, I still have only a shallow understanding. I think mm -hmm. uh, I understand the concept behind good, it. Good, good. Right. And did you have a, 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 some early experience on AI work or something? Uh, I tried, uh, as I mentioned, I tried some. Uh, so I presented the Sudoku. Solver, mm -hmm. you know, so I tried such uh, AIs. I see. So you are you are a, a normal uh, freshman, but yeah, you I think you went through uh, very well. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I'm very glad to see your presentation. And is there any other comment from others? You should make a comment to get your credit. Giri. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. He covered almost everything that we have learned till now, and it was really refreshing. And just it just reminded me everything that I have learned till now. Thank you. And Daniel, I have a question about the Google Google API. You you said the you said that. API provide the color from the world, but I I wonder, uh, the world is based 
on the uh, the color based on the uh, some images or the arbitrary mapping. So Google Google analyzes the images about the words. Is it right? Yes, basically Google or uh, from what I uh, it reportedly or uh, gave it a millions upon millions of uh, pieces of paragraphs of text uh, and uh, for years it was uh, learning and learning and apparently it learned how to textualize uh, the uh, sentences in English so basically it's uh, it understands as we people do it can understand the context of a particular sentence is a sentence good or is a sentence bad so so for example of your your uh, example uh the good the word good is too too general so the result is neutral right yeah uh, so if we, if we making a it is it is a very very good then the the result will be uh, some non neutral things maybe yeah uh yeah so so that that is the example of happy yeah however uh, we. Uh, the example that I showed you, like the color, right? Uh, it has only a. It was taught on only a thousand of words, I suppose, from what I read. Mm -hmm. So it's not a complete. It's just an example. Mm -hmm. For the complete, you actually need to pay for it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, for a thousand of words, uh, you need to pay to use the <laughs> GPT three. Actually, yeah, the presentation was very good and. It, it was very interesting, so thank you so much. Okay, good. Uh, Juno, Ha? Yeah, um, um, your explanation is very nice and detailed, so I appreciate about that. And especially, I think, in Q&A section, uh, your code about Python or Sage or and so on is very useful to me, so especially I'm I very thanks to you about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Oh, thank you. And uh, now I think it's time for the second presentation. Uh, Jun, uh, Junho, uh, Jun, okay. Yeah. Will you start to uh, present, then uh, then uh, Giri will talk later uh, after uh, Junho. Okay, yeah, you can share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 발표하면 you 너무 많은 you can tell me any language that you are familiar. Yeah. 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 일단 이 강의에서 배웠던 것들 중에 가장 이제 인상 깊었 어떤 것이 일단 세계 처음에 어디서 시작할지 그 다음에 러닝 레이트 그러니까 얼마나 어, 어떤 폭폭으로 앞으로 나아갈지 그 다음에 토너런스 그러니까 우리가 원래 옵티멀 포인트를 정확히 찾아야 되는데 정확히 찾기 어려우니까 그 범위를 어느 정도까지 허용해 줄지 이거 세 개를 정하고 나면 나머지는 컴퓨터가 알아서 자, 이제 잘 계산해 줄수 있는 어떤 방법 알고리즘을 우리가 사용할 수 있다는 점에서 매우 유익했던 것 같습니다. 이 GDM이라는 것이. Okay. 그리고 조인트 프로버빌리티는 사실은 mm -hmm. 어, 이 강의를 mm -hmm. 들을 때는 그렇게까지 인상 깊은 점을 못 받았었는데 mm -hmm. 제가 이번 학기에 금융계량 과목을 들으면서 mm -hmm. 이제 크로스 섹셔널 데이터랑 이제 타임 시리즈 데이터를 함께 사용하게 되면 결국에 이 조인트 프로버빌리티 개념이 mm -hmm. 꽤 중요해진다는 걸 알아서 mm -hmm. 다시 한번 점검하게 된 예, 그런 개념이었던 것 같습니다. Good. Yeah. 예, 그리고 컨디셔널 프로버빌리티는 사실 이거 자체도 중요하겠지만 이 베이즈 시어럼을 통해서 yeah. 어떤 사후 확률을 예측할 수 있는 음. 그런 단서로 우리가 마련했다는 점에서 이두 가지는 이 4번과 5번 개념은 굉장히 
이렇게 했던 것 같고요. 음흠. 이제 코베리언스를 이용해서 이제, 이제 밸런스라는 개념을 사용해서 우리가 데이터의 어떤 음흠. 양을 측정한 정확하게 뭐 이런 의미인지 모르겠지만 네. 어떤 평균에서부터 얼마나 멀리 떨어져 있는지가 음흠. 이제 우리가 소실 소실시켜서 어, 소실시키는 데이터 의 양이 된다는 점이 되게 어, 새로 방식이었기 때문에 기억에 남는 부분이었던 것 같습니다. 이 PCA에서 그리고 이제 이 ANN은 결국엔 인풋을 받아서 아웃풋을 내는데 일반적인 함수처럼 이 가운데가 이제 어떤 것이 잘 들어갈지 모르는데 그 어떤 것이 들어가는 것이 좋을지에 대해서 이제 찾아내는 방법이 이제 이 역전파법 백프로파게이션이라고 생각하게 됐고요. 어, 이 시그모이드 액티베이션 펑션 같은 경우는 사실 그냥 어, 일반적인 on, off로 0이나 1로 쓰면 될것 같은데 왜 이걸 쓰게 되었을까라는 점에서 생각해 보면 이게 미분이 상당히 이제 편하고 특히 이제 미분 불가능성이 없기 때문에 음흠. 그런 장점이 있기 때문에 쓴다는 사실을 알고 어, 꽤 흥미로웠던 것 같습니다. 그리고 두 함수를 구하, 구할 필요가 없이 리플레이스를 하면서 세컨, 서드, 데리버티브가 계속 나와도 그냥 두 함수를 구할 필요가 없이 그냥 대치하면서 계속 하니까 네. 그 메모리 저장할 것도 없이 그냥 계속 튀어나오니까 아... 시간을 엄청 절약할 수 있죠. 보함수를 구하지 아, 그런... 않고 보함수를 구할 수 있으니까. 보함수 계산하지 계산이 필요 없어집니다. 그래요. 아, 예. 그 부분은 굉장히 이거보다 네. 더 개선된 렐루 펑션을 주로 ANN에서 써요. 렐루 펑션. 아... 근데 이론적으로는 굉장히 나이스하지. 시그모이드 펑션. 네. 설명할 때. 오케이. 네. 아무튼 굉장히 유익했었습니다. 특히 이제 이 GDM 같은 경우는 앞서 말씀드린 것처럼 이 파란색 이니셜 이터레이트랑 톨러런스랑 러닝 라이트를 정해주면은 이제 네. 정해진 알고리즘에 따라서 쭉 옵티멀한 포인트를 찾아간다는 점이 굉장히 인상이 깊었고요. 음흠. 이 프로버빌리티는 어 굉장히 기초적인 개념이긴 하지만 사실 굉장히 추상적으로만 알지 객관적으로 뭔, 뭐 어떤 조건을 만족해야 되는가 이런 것들을 알기가 좀 어려웠는데 이렇게 음흠. 강의에서 이 다섯 가지 이제 캐릭터리스틱을 이제 좀 구체적으로 짚고 넘어갈 수 있어서 굉장히 좋았습니다. 음흠. 특히 이첫 번째, 두 번째 같은 경우는 음. 추후에 어, 김단일 학우님이 음. 이제 큰 프로블럼을 풀때 음. 음수는 그 상태에 점검할 수 있었던 것 같아서 예, 여기에 넣게 되었습니다. 그리고 네. 몬티얼 프로블럼은 사실 오묘감에 들어는 봤는데 이걸 베이즈 시어럼으로 해결할 수 있다는 점이 굉장히 인상 깊어서 다시 넣게 되었는데요. <웃음> 네. 생각보다 베이즈 시어럼을 적용하기가 꽤 복잡해서 좀 놀랐습니다. <웃음> 그리고 이 최소 자산법과 선형 회계의 관계가 사실 그냥 어렴풋이 비슷한 느낌으로만 알고 있었는데 음. 마지막에 이제 교수님께서 다 정리를 해주셨, 해주셔서 조금 더 정확하게 이해를 했던 것 같습니다. 이게 부분집합의 관계가 어느 정도 성립하는 것 같았고요. 이거 백프로파게이션은 이제 김단일 학우님과 이제 강의 교환의 여덟 가지 단계로 이렇게 설명이 되어 있는데 특히 저는 이 데이터 디비전이 좀 인상이 깊었던 것 같습니다. 전체 데이터의 80%는 이제 학습을 위해 쓰이고 나머지 20%는 테스트를 위해서 이제 남겨놓는 이제 과정이 어 저는 진짜 미쳤어요. 예, 생각하지 못했던 부분이었고 그리고 이렇게 매트릭스와 액티베이션 펑션을 처음에 셋업한 다음에 이 3, 4, 5 과정을 쭉 반복하면서 이제 좀 최적화된 옵티멀한 모델을 설정해 나가는 방법이 이 백프로페게이션이라는 것을 알게 되었습니다. 네. 제가 이번 그좀 겨울 학기에 이것저것 좀 취업 준비나 대학원 진학 때문에 좀 바빠가지고 활동이 중간에 좀 비었는데 음. 이것 때문에 사실 수업을 좀못 따라갈까 걱정을 많이 했는데 그래도 김다솔 학우님이나 그 길이 학우님이나 김단일 학우님이 좀 피드백을 그래도 해주셔가지고 뒤늦게 좀 많이 따라올 수 있었던 것 같습니다. 정말 감사하게 생각하고 있습니다. 네, 특히 이제 저한테 의미 있었던 코멘트나 앤서 이런 그 논의, 토, 디스커션을 좀 뽑아보자면 크게 이제 세 개가 있었는데 첫 번째는 음. 이제 GDM과 관련해서 그 밀크 9에 음. 이제 김단일 학우님께서 이렇게 코드를 음. 너무 잘 남겨주셔가지고 제가 아 물론 이 세이지 코드도 좀잘 썼지만 
이걸 음. 활용해서 좀몇 가지 그 활동을 할 수가 있었는데 특히 텍스트 이런 텍스트 코드만 그냥 아무 그 저기 셀그 그, 웹에 있는 셀에 갖다 놓으면은 그냥 뭐든지 인터랙티브한 툴까지 만들어서 컴퓨테이션하고 시뮬레이션까지 할수 있으니까 굉장히 편하죠. 다른 예. 툴은 설치 아무것도 필요 없이 텍스트 코드만 알면 되니까 그렇죠? 예. 그래서 굉장히 좀 재밌는 활동이었습니다. 특히 이제 이걸 통해서는 GDM이 왜 이니셜 이터레이터를 중요한 거 정하, 정해주는 게 중요한지를 알수 있었는데 특히 이런 함수 같은 경우는 이제 X는 0에서 이제 미분 개수는 0이 되지만 이제 그 변곡점이어서 그, 로, 그 익스트림 포인트를 갖지 않는 뭐 그런 함수인데 이 이전점을 잡아버리면은 이게 미니멈을 구하는 거나 맥시멈을 구하는 게 생각보다 골치 아파질 수 있구나라는 걸 이런 그냥 단순한 코드로는 좀 하긴 하기 어려운데 특히 이제 김단일 학원님의 코드 덕분에 좀 확실히 음. 눈에 볼수 있어서 비주얼라이징이 돼서 좋았던 것 같습니다. 그래요. 두 그래서, 번째가 음 그래요. 어쨌든 예. 그, 저 경영, 어, 글로벌 경영학과에 다른 학생들한테 어떤 거 시뮬레이션 할때저 코드만 가지고도 이렇게 할, 해서 보여주면은 그 저기 그, 그 도움이 될 테니까 많이들 서로해서 네. 사용하세요. 이, 네. 이 세이지 매스 그래퍼를 내가 만든 거야. <웃음> 아, <웃음> 그래요. 네, 너무 편하게 잘 사용하고 있습니다. 그리고 두 번째가 그 앞서 말씀드린 그 프로버블리티 그 확률 변수 개념과 관련해서 이 다섯 가지 성질을 만족을 해야 되는데 이제 김단일 학우님이 만든 그 프로버블리티 이제 그 댄스티 펑션과 같은 경우에 이제 음. 어떤 점인지 정확히 모르지만 마이너스 0.7부터 음수로 가는 좀 문제점도 있고 물론 구간을 마이너스 0.5부터 1까지 성장하긴 하셨는데 여기서 음. 다 접근을 하면 전체 확률 그러니까 두 번째 성질인 전체 확률이 음. 예, 전체 확률이 음. 1인 특성을 만족해야 되는데 이게 만족을 안 하면서 음수 그 베리언스가 음수가 나오는 그런 문제점이 생겼었는데 그 부분이 이제 저는 이미 수업이 아마 13주차 이렇게 진행되고 있는데 이 부분을 피드백 했는데도 김단일 학원님이 빠르게 피드백을 해주셔가지고 굉장히 인상 깊었습니다. 그리고 여기에는 미처 적지 못했는데 미분 배수와 관련해서 아니, 그 익스트림 포인트를 찾는 그런 알고리즘과 관련해서 위크 8에 김단일 학원님이 이렇게 그 익스트림 포인트를 찾는 코드를 다 만들어 주셨었는데 잠시만요. 이게 음. Q&A 섹션에 있을 텐데 예, 이런 식으로 만들어 주셨는데 음. 이걸 짜는 논리와 관련해서 이 코드와 관련해서 음. 뭐 실제로 익스트림 포인트를 우리가 눈으로 그래프가 그려져 있는 상태에서 눈으로 찾는 거랑 다르게 음. 예, 코드로 찾는 게 굉장히 로직상 어려움이 좀 있어가지고 음. 결국에는 이제 좀 아주 좋은 방법까지는 생각해내지 못하고 좀 차선책을 많이 선택했던 점이 기억이 납니다. 음. 이게 아, 우리가 배우는 미분이라는 개념이 그렇게 쉬운 개념은 아니구나라는 걸좀 깨달을 수 있어서 <웃음> 의미 깊었던 시간이었던 것 같습니다. <웃음> 그래요. 음. 그리고 어, 그 외에도 피어 리뷰에 간단하게 하자면 이제 어, 김단일 어. 학우님은 이제 뭐 말할 것도 없고 이제 프라바스 음. 기리 학우님 같은 경우는 굉장히 좀 간결하게 뭐 설명해 주시는 음. 점이 굉장히 좋았고 또 마지막에 제가 14주차에 이제 그 뭐, 보이스 관련해서 목소리 관련해서 이제 이 백프로파게이션과 ANN 이용해서 그 인공지능이 어떻게 우리의 목소리를 의미 있는 문장으로 인식하는지 관련된 글을 굉장히 잘 봤던 것 같습니다. 음, 음. 김다솔 학우님은 이제 또 여기서 한국을 좀 쓰는 학우로서 음. 이렇게 올려주셨던 글이 제 이야기가 더 편하고 제 입장에서 한국어를 한국어로 써 있는 부분이 있기 때문에 그랬던 게 굉장히 도움이 많이 됐던 것 같습니다. 이게 중간고사 네. 이전에는 모르겠지만 이제 중간고사 이후에 많은 활동 해주셔가지고 굉장히 본인한테는 너무 박하고 다른 사람들한테는 너무 제네로스하네. 내가 <웃음> <웃음> 오케이 길이 시도 야 길이 워저 프리시티스 바이 파 오케이 get going 그리고 이거는 이제 Q&A 섹션을 이제 쭉 모았고 맨 마지막에 이제 좀총 정리를 하자면 이제 이 수업을 통해서 어 물론 중간고사에는 이제 선형대수학의 굉장히 이제 기초적이고 또뭐 리니어 
그 시스템 오브 이케이션을 푸는 뭐 그런 방법을 배웠지만 S, SVD 아, 싱귤라 배 여러분 아, 싱귤을 배운 게뭐 가우스 오버법을 하고 또 아이겐 밸류 부고 뭐 디터미넌트 배우고 뭐 행렬 대각화 배우고 한그 모든 게다 합쳐져서 싱귤라 밸류 디컴포지션을 이해하게 되는 네. 거거든요. 그러니까 SVD를 배우기 위해서 앞에 그 많은 시간을 보낸 거예요. 그러니까 여러분들이 선형대수학 배우는 시간의 대부분이 한 학기 동안 배우는 대부분이 그 SVD를 이해시키기 위해서 하는 건데 <웃음> 보통 선형대수학 한 학기에서는 SVD까지 안 가르치고 끝나고 우리는 짧은 시간에 그 SVD를 이해시키려고 한 건데 다행히 그 SVD를 해야만 PCA를 이해할 수 있잖아요. 그 PCA 해야만 네. 그 리덕션을 이해할 수 있고 그러니까 그 부분을 하기 위해서 굉장히 중요한 부분이기 때문에 나머지는 다 코딩으로 처리가 되고 하지만 이 그아그 그, 랭크 리덕션 부분을 이해 못하고 프린시펄 컴포넌트 를 이해 못하면 그러면 이 저기 인공지능 이 이제 컴퓨터 사용하는 게 불가능하기 때문에 그때 SVD를 이해하기 위해서 앞에 많은 시간을 쓴 거였어요. 리덕션 도함수. 네. 네. 네, 교수님께서 언급하신 대로 특히 저는 이번 학기에 계량과 관련된 걸 들으면서 좀 데이터 크기가 커지니까 이게 음. 프로그램에서 막좀 느리고 버벅거리고 이런 걸 많이 느꼈는데 음. 이제 그런 거를 물론 이제 제 멋대로 이렇게 그 PC SVD랑 PC를 사용해가지고 이렇게 잘라버릴 수는 없었지만 이런 걸 사용하면 참 편하겠다는 걸좀 몸소 느낄 수 있어서 굉장히 좋은 경험이었던 것 같습니다. 그리고 뭐 음. 그 밖에도 이제 GDM을 통해서 이제 옵티멀 솔루션을 어떻게 어프로시메이션을 컴퓨터로 음. 할수 있는지. 것도 배울 음. 수 있었고 이제 백프로페게이션 같은 경우는 뭐 굉장히 뭐 세부적인 어떤 알고리즘을 볼 수는 없었지만 그래도 어떤 식으로 돌아가는 건지에 대해서 좀 간략하게 이해를 할수 있었던 것 같습니다. 음. 전반적으로 그래서 이제 미드텀과 파이널 포함해서 이렇게 음. 어, 선형대 수학 미, 뭐 미분적분 그리고 또 통계에 관련된 이제 가장 기초적인 좀 지식들을 이제 음. 배우면서 이제 데이터를 어떻게 우리가 사용할, 사용해서 의미 있는 결론을 도출해낼 수 있는지 알수 있어서 굉장히 음. 도움이 되었던 것 같습니다. 이걸 좀 2학년, 3학년 때 배웠으면 더 좋았을 것 같은데 좀 아쉬운 마음이 생기네요. 지금 졸업반이에요? 4학년이에요? 예, 올해 졸업합니다. 네, 그래요. 이제 마지막 과목이 될수 수 있겠네. <웃음> <웃음> 그래요. 1학년 때 배워야 될 거는 4학년 때 배우고 졸업을 하게 된 거예요. 예, 그럼 어쨌든, 그러게요. 그러니까 그 이제 이 지금 우리 학부모에서 배운 거에서 배운 건 뭐냐면, 그러니까 데이터들이 있으면 데이터 갖고 데이터 행렬을 만들 수 있죠. 네. 그렇죠? 그 데이터 행렬을 가지고 거기서부터 이제 코베리언스 매트릭스를 만들 수 있죠. 예. 네. 코베리언스 매트릭스인데 엄청 크지. 그 밀리언 바이 밀리언, 네. 밀리언 바이 투 밀리언 이렇게 크잖아요. 그거 컴퓨터 어떤 컴퓨터도 그 핸들링 못 해요. 그러니까 결국 랭크를 낮추기 위해서 SVD를 무조건 해야 되죠. SVD 사용해서 네. 그래서 디멘전을 확 낮춰주는 거죠. 그래서 랭크 리덕션에서 네. 사이즈를 우리가 매니저블 한뭐 100바이 100, 1000바이 1000, 바이 1000 만바이만 정도 행렬로 바꿔 놓는 거죠. 이제 그러고 나서 그걸 이용해서 이제 그 이제 문제를 푸는 거죠. 이게 문제를 풀려면 그다음에 이제 이그젝트 솔루션이 존재하지 않으니까 그러니까 저기 퍼스 베스트 퍼스라는 솔루션을 찾게 되죠. 그렇기 위해서 네. 이터레이션이 필요하지. 이제 그럴 때 이제 그레디언 디스턴스 메소드가 필요 사용되는 거죠. 이제 그런 전체 과정이 PCA에서 표현이 돼서 그래서 PCA를 이용해서 이제 그걸 사람이 계속 코딩을 하고 뭐 이거 고치고 하는 게 이제 그게 너무 힘들고 시간도 오래 걸리고 하니까 이제 그거는 반복되는 작업은 이제 컴퓨터한테 맡기는 거죠. 그게 이제 뭐 네. 이거 인공지능이지. 이제 그때 그 자절로 알아서 돌아가게 하는 게 이제 백 프로포지션 알고리즘이 기본적인 핵심 알고리즘이다. 이제 그렇게 이해를 해서 실제로 본인의 전공 데이터를 가지고 그 전체 과정을 한 번만 해서 그걸 프로젝트로 내면 그러면 이 과목에서 배울 건다 배운 거예요. 그걸, 그거를 잘한 자, 멋있는 데이터를 갖고 멋있는 결과를 얻으면 좋은 성적을 받는 거고 <웃음> 자꾸 포화한 데이터 갖고 그리고 저그 그 저기 그그 언익스펙티드 그 레저트를 얻으면 포어 디그레이드를 받는 거가 이번 학기의 골이었어요. 나머지는 다 전체 과정이었고 그렇게 실습을 해볼 수 있는 그런 그 기본적인 내용을 그냥 talk about 그러니까 물어보고 답하고 또 공유하고 하면서 코드도 공유하고 코드 같은 것도 혼자 짜는 것보다는 같이 이렇게 고, 서로 남의 걸 보고 고쳐가면서 하니, 하면 훨씬 더 완성도가 높은 코드를 만들 수 있잖아요. 실제 여러분들이 다음 여러분들이 문제 쓸수 있는 많은 분야의 문제 쓸수 있는 범용적인 코드를 만들 수 있잖아요. 그 경험이 필요한 거예요. 내가 잘한다 못한다 이게 중요한 게 아니라 
서로 지식을 공유하는 과정을 여러분들이 거쳤기를 바라는 거예요. 어쨌든 야 발표 잘 했고 네. 야 코멘트 야 에브리바디 슈드 메이크업 심플리 쇼트 코멘트 투 미스터 박 다니엘 Yeah, uh, so I appreciate that you explained the joint probability. And uh, actually, I want to say that uh, the Monty Hall problem explanation that you posted, it was very helpful. And actually, you were the one that uh, actually used the formulas to solve the Monty Hall's problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, just by looking at your PBL report, I think that you gave yourself a very low <laughs> score. I <laughs> think uh, you did very great, uh, actually. Yeah. And even though uh, a couple of weeks you were absent, then the last few weeks you basically just did everything that you skipped. So yeah. I don't think that yeah. it should be 6.5. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, he will graduate soon. Yeah, so this is going to be his last class, uh, maybe, yeah. And TV, just simple comment. Congratulations on your graduation. <laughs> graduation. <laughs> That's all. Oh, so I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go 실제로는 뭐 실상황에서는 쓸수 없다 뭐 이렇게 생각할 수도 있는데 사실 다른 디멘션 리덱션 그 알고리즘들을 살펴보면은 뭔가 본격적인 작업에 들어가기 전에 프리 프로세싱으로 PCA를 활용하는 경우가 굉장히 많더라고요. 어 교수님이 언급하신 것처럼 PCA에 관련해서 심도 있게 살펴보신 게 굉장히 잘 하신 것 같습니다. Oh, thank Good. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, the, it was a good presentation by Mr. Ba, and we appreciate it. And next, Giri will talk about his presentation. You may share yours. Yeah, Hakkunen, Gongyu, go to go. Yeah. Giri can share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Suguesayo. Mm -hmm. Giri, you may share share your 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 screen. Share your screen, okay. So okay. is it visible? About 15 minutes, so you can talk, okay? Yeah. So I will just talk about the main topics that I have learned from this whole 14 weeks. The first mm -hmm. one is um, SVD, Singular Value Decomposition. Uh -huh. So I understood that um, it is a use, it is a used for reducing the dimension of a data matrix that has high dimension. Uh, mm -hmm. After reducing the, after making it in the low dimensional matrix, uh, uh, it uses low it it uh, it uses low computational power, mm -hmm. and like uh, SVD is used for image uh, compression and voice recognition, mm -hmm. and it is applicable for all rectangular and square matrix. Mm -hmm. And the next topic is. Uh, gradient descent method mm -hmm. um, so uh, this method is uh, basically we use it to when we need to find the minimum value of an uh, function when mm -hmm. it is not possible for us to calculate through our hand we use this method mm -hmm. so uh, at first we find the slope of the function and then move it towards uh, downhill and uh, repeat it until it reaches the extreme value mm -hmm. Uh, so the picture is not loading here, but I I hope that you know the formula. So we talked about permutations, which is the rules of counting where order matters, and in combinations, mm -hmm. the rules mm -hmm. of counting doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. conditional probability is that probability of uh, something when something has already occurred. So in this case, the probability that an event A B has B occurs, given that the event A has already occurred. Uh, and then we also talked about uh, covariance matrix, like the, it is a matrix where the variances are in the diagonal diagonal uh, entry and the uh, non-diagonal non -diag non entries 
are of uh, covariances and then we talked about <coughs> pca so uh -huh. um pca is the widely used uh, dimensional reduction uh, dimension reduction technique uh, which reduces the high dimensional data into low dimensional data while preserving its main properties and uh, we also discussed discussed about how SVD is used in PCA. So SVD is basically used to reduce the dimension of the data, and after it reduces the data, it presents us with a matrix which can be easily analyzed and manipulated. Uh, we discussed about this uh, artificial neural network. So it is it just uh, works like how our uh, how neurons in our body works. It receives input uh, multiple inputs and produces one singular output. So uh, after the neurons receive input data from other artificial neurons, the input, new, uh, the input artificial neurons combines with the given weights and creates an output by uh, linearly combining and a single value uh, with the weight and adding the biases. Then we substitute the value we obtain through linear combination in activation function and output is obtained. And then we discuss about back propagation. Uh, this is basically what happens in that uh, deep learning part. Uh, it, it occurs inside the PCA where this process of all the middle part process is occurring, uh, such as like um, it, it is the process of creating and updating weights between the layers. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm, So when the hidden layer receives an input uh, and it's computed with the weight, then we uh, obtain an output through the activation function. There will be an error uh, between the predicted output and the obtained output. Here we use the gradient descent method to minimize the error. And now we modify the weight, which is basically uh, what we say the back propagation is. So these are the main things that we have learned in this whole uh, 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm, and I have just stated all the things that I have learned. So for the first weeks, uh, just we learned about the basic mathematics which we have learned previously and we just um, revised it and we learned how to solve it using different codes. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, we just dove, dove into the more deeper topics uh, such, like, such as PCA, GD, uh, GDM and uh, backpropagation, ANN, which are the uh, base requirements uh, needed to understand AI. Mm -hmm. So I um, so in the later weeks we just uh, we start we actually started to learn more about AI and uh, um, with this uh, proper base knowledge we we it will be easy for us to uh, further learn about the AI in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is my particip participation that I have done in this whole week. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I have tried to uh, participate as much as I can, and I have increased my participation from the first uh, <laughs> seven weeks because I actually got idea how I should participate and how I should actually mm -hmm. keep updating myself with uh, the Q&A. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are all the things that I have learned. So we learned about Monty Hall problem, and I would like mm -hmm. to thank uh, Park uh, Jun Ho Nim that he uploaded that uh, the proper calculation of uh, Monty Hall problem as I had also explained it by just an explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, in case of that uh, variance, I would like to thank uh, Kim Daniel Nim as he uh, provided the correct code and I was able to correct it. It seems that I had al again posted the previous uh, my calculations. So again, I have updated it again. Mm. And these are my meaningful uh, statement and conversation with them. Like um, Daniel gave me wonderful feedback about this one. And this is my project proposal. So just like how we can use uh, our Google, uh, Google camera to identify objects um, and things and search it. I just wanted to uh, just like keeping in mind, uh, it, it will be an app for an uh, especially uh, special person like who cannot uh, who don't have a proper vision so that they can use this app to know what they are seeing or what uh, is the object in front of them but in our case uh, we are shown in text but I want it to be uh, 
uh, like informed through voice. So that after learning about ANN and um, this back propagation and all this, I just think that uh, like uh, how far we for this application to learn more and uh, just like improve itself, we can provide the data from this MNIST and along with ANN, we can just uh, and applying with ANN, we can improve, we can make the uh, machine learn um, about what uh, they have learned. So for example, there will be, there are many data that are in MNIST, so we can provide the learning data from there and train data so that the machine can improve itself by um, several experiences. Mm -hmm. And this is my self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to thank all, all uh, my classmates who are present in this presentation for, for providing such a wonderful, uh, um, uh, wonderful answers in the Q and A session. Because uh, in every question, each one, each one of us have a different uh, perspective of solving the answer. So. We have a lot of material uh, regarding the same question and because of which uh, it will be easier uh, because which it has been easier for me to have a clear idea regarding the questions. And I, I would also like to thank our professor for providing the quotes and uh, for the such and um, wonderful explanation in our uh, lectures. And uh, this is this is my self evaluation. So mm -hmm. I have not given my any score, but uh, I would like to provide everyone 10 out of 10 because they have all been working really hard and participated in QA diligently. Yeah, Kiri was generous to, to, by, by, to himself and all others as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have a moral value of loving myself, sir. <laughs> okay. I will let you know that you can make those, yeah. And um, this is my all other evaluations and this is all this participation of Q&A. Yeah. yeah, okay. Go to your final comment. Yes, sir. What, what was the most interesting uh, knowledge or experience uh, that you learned from this? So for me, it was uh, that uh, PCA, ANN, and back proposition yeah. because um, like yeah. I was already, always interested in AI, but however, like mm -hmm. I never tried to learn about it. It was just like I was interested in it. So this mm -hmm. course gave me basic idea how AI works and mm -hmm. uh, it just gave me an introduction to AI so that I am now more interested in learning more about artificial intelligence. Okay, good. Yeah, go to the final comment then. Mm -hmm. So for the final comment, um, I personally feel that the before the midterm, as we were just revising what we had learned, it was uh, I was not much interested. But after the midterm, I was more mm -hmm. focused because there were new fascinating topics that I had never learned, and I was just eager to know more about it. Mm -hmm. And how. Uh, Everyone had their own idea regarding each topic, so uh, I in, I enjoyed uh, going through all the materials that were provided, and they were really informative. Mm -hmm. So um, I also enjoyed learn being under our professor. So I look forward in taking more courses provided by him in the next semester. Mm, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's such a good presentation and. Uh, yeah, uh, you asked me to have some extra credit, but you didn't finish up your uh, your project uh, proposal. So I may give you a chance. Uh, in uh, in this semester, we learned the basic mathematics for the last uh, about eight weeks. Okay, and then we we used all those mathematics: the singular variable decomposition, gradient method, and the covariance uh, matrix uh, to develop the principal component analysis so understand you and then we use those on your data uh, to make up the, the data matrix and uh, then lead you uh, then use the uh, use the principal component analysis to reduce the dimension okay then uh, we use the uh, the gradient descent method to develop uh, the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the artificial neural network 
which works by uh, the back propagation algorithm. I just wanted to one uh, one you to uh, one our student to have an uh, experience of doing uh, those processes uh, uh, with your own data, with the uh, with the help of others. Okay, so uh, to and then then uh, add those uh, activities in your PBA report to present and use it for your uh, portfolio later. Okay, please write uh, the, my intention in English about uh, one or two pages for the uh, students who's going to take this course, course later. Okay, Giri, in yes, sir. Project, what I told now is uh, what you're supposed to write it down, summarize it, and submit it to me. So, so what we have learned a, with all this put in I'll give you extra credit. If so you are, you if it it helps your grade, then it may be uh, good for you. Okay. So I need to summarize what we have learned in this whole fourteen weeks so that it will be uh, beneficial for the future students. Oh uh, yes, yes, yeah. Write down a summary that helps to the the student who's gonna take the same course later. Okay, a student like that. Two page uh, simple summary. Okay, okay. next. We have uh, 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 just one comment for uh, for Giri's presentation. Who's gonna give a presentation? Uh, so, uh, Daniel, Daniel, would you add uh, one comment to Giri's presentation? Sure. Well, I think that he did very good. Like honestly, and also I remember your project from the PBL report previous. And I think uh, even though there are a lot of similar uh, concepts in the internet, none of them actually completely realized yet. Like, I, I remember you wanted to make an ANN to help people with disabilities, right? Yes. Uh, so I think if you succeed, that would be amazing, actually. So keep up the good work, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Giri was a, uh, he's a freshman too. So yeah, as a freshman, yeah, you did a, a wonderful job uh, too. To survive and may, and do well, <laughs> and maybe Juno, Juno, you may add uh, just one last comment for Giri. Um, um, uh, very thanks to your informative uh, Q and A, and even even uh, week thirteen or fourteen, your uh participation is very useful to me. So thank you. Okay, now, now the Kim Tasol uh, will talk about uh, his uh, final PBA report in, uh, in uh, maybe uh, in about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, so we can have uh, time for lunch. Kim Tasol, yeah, you can share your screen. Okay. Tasol is a junior student. She will talk about his final PBA report for about 10 minutes. Okay. 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 Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. okay. This is my PBA report, and this is the scope of midterm, and it's. Mm -hmm. So the PCA is. What I learned is uh, in this semester is uh, five things in the midterm scope. Mm -hmm. The first is the PCA. Actually, PCA is the the most important things in this semester. Not only me, but for all the students and and uh, but it, it the things are well explained by other people and neural networks and what. I learned, and I can explain now what is neural network. And uh, actually, I I confused. I had confused about the neural network with other models because mm -hmm. I I I don't have an experience to organize them well. But in this semester and in this course, mm -hmm. I can organize the neural network to other methods and other models. So neural network is a uh. uh is a kind of a 
general concept of model to mm -hmm. to make a artificial neuron from right like a graph 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 models from first layer to other layers uh, but the the important thing of defining the neural network is the uh, uh, multiple layer and uh, multiple input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, show us, uh, uh, show your screen. Screen slowly. Yeah. Uh, is, is it, is it? Oh, I see. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the next thing is activation function and sigmoid function. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a chance to organize them. Uh, there is a, a lot of a lot of kinds of a sigmoid function, a lot of examples, because sigmoid function is defined with just S shaped curve function. Or the S shaped curve is a sigmoid function. So I I just think that sigmoid function is a, a one we or know about the e over minus x like that. But uh, now I can see that sigmoid functions are the general concept of uh, the shaped S shaped curve kind of a, a rarity function or the uh tan hyperbolic tangent function so i can explain about that so and then the gradient descent method is the one of i uh, interested and because the gradient descent method is a uh, a method to find on on optima but the important thing of the gradient descent method approach is is the only way to solve the optimization problem in the very complex functions. So in, in real problem, uh, most of the cases, in the most of the cases, the GDM is used. So, so that is the, what I interested. And this is 10 things I know mm -hmm. and I learned. Mm -hmm. Five things are in the midterms, and the after five things is about the PCA. I can explain what is the principal axis is in the PCA, mm -hmm. and I can make a dimensional reduction with the PCA mm -hmm. uh, algorithm, and I can explain how neural network is composed. Actually, uh, uh, if you are asking me how the neural network is working, then I, I'm not sure that I can explain it, but like now I can explain mm -hmm. how the neural network is composed. There is a, a neurons and there is a weight and bias and the infant layers and there is a, a deep, deep layers and hidden layers and out layers. Then I can explain about the composition. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. just just i i said a word like that and i can explain how back propagation works yeah i uh, yes daniel is explaining this well and i can explain how gradient descent vessel works actually i i'm not sure to explain that i was not sure to explain that but now i can explain and i can make a code about that and I, I did in the Q a section actually. So, That's all? Yes. Uh, yeah, there was an error path here. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors are one word. Eigen oh. And yeah. also back propagation is a one word too. So oh, really? If you have such an error path, uh, when you say you can do something, that is it, it will reduce the credibility of what you say. Mm -hmm. So, so when you have when you submit your final uh, report for mm -hmm. evaluation, you should mm -hmm. check the uh, uh. double the spell check. You should have a spell check and others. So, we, so okay. all those will uh, will be considered to uh, for the reduction. Uh, for yeah, for 
Okay, yeah, okay. I, I can see. Okay, anyway, it's I'll, I'll minus. Minus. Okay, get going. Yeah, you have five minutes left. Yeah, so just give all of them. Yeah. And let's go to the final comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the one important, yeah, one one important mathematics that you have learned before the final comment. What is the most important mathematics that you have learned in this course? I want to pick the uh, where is this? Yeah, one example, one one yeah. discussion or one problem or some, one solution or one code. What I was want, it? I want to pick the GDM gradient descent method yeah. because okay mm -hmm. because I made a this code. So show us before and then go to the final comment. Okay. Yes. Oh. Uh, did I mention about that more? Yeah, more. Yeah, detail. Uh, detail for, mathematics that you have For done. detail, mm -hmm. GDM is a GDM is a general concept to solve the optimization I, problem. I mean, you explained it before. What you about the GDM? Now I want to show a problem that you have solved. Ah, the yeah. Algorithm that you have learned and we have, we have, we have executed. Yeah, this yes. this so theory, explain this problem. Week nine GDM open problem. Theory. Yeah, here explain is an problem. Here is an uh, implementation mm -hmm. of a GDM, mm -hmm. and uh, is a uh, fx is nine x square minus seven x plus six. The problem mm -hmm. is solve the minimal value of that. Okay, and. We should uh, define before take on GDM. We should mm -hmm. define the three things: the initial value, mm -hmm. and the uh, eta, the running rate, and the actual on the the end of the the end of the differences. Mm -hmm. So initial state is x minus uh, x mm -hmm. x one is zero, then f x one is six. In, in the in the app, so and then we should uh, define the formula, update formula with the running rate and the the x with the f x. Mm -hmm. So x is updated with x minus running rate multiplication with mm -hmm. the f x. So d x is a, a derivative of the the function f x. So f prime x maybe. Mm -hmm. So when the x one, when on the x one, getting the derivative, then f prime x making like this, eighteen mm -hmm. x minus seven. So the x in the x one, f prime x one equals minus seven. So the x is minus seven, and then making an update formula with with x1 and the running rate and the x in the x1 mm -hmm. then x2 updated with zero minus mm -hmm. running rate multiplication minus seven mm -hmm. these two, three things are calculated with the dx equals f prime x1 mm -hmm. d minus seven is here and the initial state is here mm -hmm. x1 is zero and the eta is here so okay. x2 is updated from the x1 and the second state is fx2. So fx2 is is just iterated the upper upper levels. So it is updated with x2. Mm -hmm. fx2 becomes from 6 to 5.51. Mm -hmm. So the state is updated. This state is actual state in on the fx. Mm -hmm. So, so x and dx is a kind of mathematical concept, but the fx is a real state. You can you can uh, you can regard this uh, kind of a value. So the value is uh, always updated after and after. When you are applying GDM approach, yeah. so mm -hmm. FX3 is also updated with that. Mm -hmm. So you can 
repeat this iteration when mm -hmm. ds is smaller than epsilon when uh, we are defined the epsilon of our level. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, final code. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, you can see this uh, mm -hmm. wire wire iteration mm -hmm. wire wire the absolute of the dx derivative x. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. we are defined the epsilon uh, uh, mm -hmm. less than the, this this kind of a small okay. very very small value. Mm -hmm. So this. Uh, the function and the updating function is iterated when the dx is bigger than the epsilon. Mm -hmm. So this is iterated in this code 61. Mm -hmm. And this is, I, I run that over six digits. So this is the composed in Four point six three eight 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 nine. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the final. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, yeah. we you uh, uh we have learned uh, all the uh, mathematics uh, for a simple function of a simple variable with uh, one variable or so, uh, two variables and yeah. small size matrices. But uh, the same code can be applied for the multi-variable functions. Uh, yeah, five that is or important. seven or ten variables, same code we yeah. So actually, you can use the same code for the real problems that you say you will see uh, in the other co in the sequence of courses later. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, uh, yeah. The professor have a really important point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very very important point. Mm -hmm. So this is my final uh, comment. Mm -hmm. I, I try to solve the problem with the implementation usually. Mm -hmm. So I I usually try to implement implement the problem with mm -hmm. a Python code maybe. Mm -hmm. And I try to uh do that in overall problems, but mm -hmm. I I I I saw now I saw now it was wrong because what I learned in this class is the importance of communication mm -hmm. because uh to to do something in my own myself is very difficult thing and it is hard to solve all the problems. But the problem if where where done with the communication each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I I did not try to solve the question with others. So so that that was the problem of my world. So but I caught the problem of mine during the semester. I have tried to fix it with the rest uh, several weeks because I try to communicate with the people and I try to uh, uh, participate in Q&A sections and mm -hmm. try to question and ask the question, try to answer the question. So, One minute. So the, One what? minute left. What? One minute left. Ah yeah, so I I think the results in the last several weeks are successful in the debate and the mathematical some solutions. So and the comment is uh I should have communicated more with people with peers and more projects could have served in that way. Mm -hmm. So understanding and organizing the concepts are important, but the experience of teamwork is more important in this class than what I, I learned and I, I thought. So I try to do this in the end of this semester. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the end of the my semester. Okay. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, yeah, this is about we are is we are at about the time for the lunch. Eh? And others may some students may have an exam after the lunch. So, uh, so I will have one comment uh, to Mr. Kim uh, from others. Who's gonna give a last comment? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
이거 데이터 사이언스 전공하시는 학원님이신 것 같아서 되게 자세히 알고 계신 것 같은데 앞서서 뭔가 좀더 많은 참여를 해주셨으면 더 도움이 됐을 텐데 그 부분 좀 아쉽지만 그래도 뒤늦게라도 이렇게 많이 도와주셔서 정말 감사하게 생각하고 있습니다. 그래요. 고, uh, thank you. Good comment. And uh, Giri, yeah, you will give you. I will give you a chance to give your last comment to close off this course. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Everyone has done really well, and we have survived the, till the end. Uh, I will also like to thank our professor for being with us and supporting us in everything. And all the best. And mm -hmm. uh, I hope the best for your future. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you uh, to everyone. Yeah, you have uh, you have done a wonderful job for, uh, throughout this uh, course, and I hope yeah you can enjoy a very very nice uh, winter uh, break. And uh, I wish you all the best for your future. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.